Hi everyone, I'm Sam. I'm a test cook here at America's Test Kitchen and today we're going to be making artichoke lemon ravioli. Now normally during this time of year we're seeing a lot of butternut squash raviolis covered in brown butter, but in this case we're going to make a lighter, brighter version full of garlic, parmesan, lots of artichokes, and lots of lemon. I made my pasta dough earlier today. It's super simple. I just added 10 ounces of all-purpose flour, 6 egg yolks plus 2 whole eggs, and 2 tablespoons of olive oil. After I made the dough, I kneaded it on the counter for a couple minutes, wrapped it in plastic wrap, and let it sit on the counter for about an hour. All right, so we have our dough resting, and what's great about this recipe is we're gonna use that same canister to make the filling for our ravioli. I just simply wiped it out with a paper towel. Um, now for this filling, I have one and a half cups of jarred artichokes, one cup of whole milk ricotta cheese. Again, this is also very pantry friendly, something to keep in mind for, you know, during these times of the year. Um, I also have one ounce or a half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese as well, one minced garlic clove, a half a teaspoon of grated lemon zest, as well as one teaspoon of lemon juice. And last but not least, an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper and an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. Now I'll just put the lid on the canister, give it a whirl, and then we'll have our filling. It's important to also scrape down the sides as needed just to make sure that everything is evenly incorporated and then you're all set. So we just want to blend this for about three to four seconds in the food processor. You want a little bit of texture in your ravioli. You don't want it to be a total paste. All right, so I have my dough here that's been resting for a couple hours now, and it's very important to do that so that the pasta dough gets nice and soft and it's not going to snap back once we roll it out. So the first thing I wanna do is obviously take it out of the plastic wrap. To make this easier on myself, I'm going to just cut this dough into roughly six equal pieces. And I'm using a bench scraper here to make this job very easy on myself. All right, so I'm going to take one piece of the dough and I'm going to keep the other five pieces of dough in plastic wrap so that they don't dry out. All right, so I have one piece of dough here and what I want to do first is take a rolling pin and roll it out into roughly a six inch square. This should be very easy to do because we did rest this for a period of time, which allows this to not snap back as we're rolling it. What's great about this recipe too, this pasta contains a lot of eggs, so you can actually just use a rolling pin if you don't have a pasta machine at home. As I'm rolling this out, it's starting to stick to the counter just a little bit, so I have some bench flour that I'm just going to throw onto the counter to make sure that it doesn't stick. But you don't want to use too much. This looks about right. So according to my calculations slash ruler, we are right at the six inch mark. So I have my pasta machine at the lowest setting. You always wanna start at the lowest setting and work your way higher in number so that it gets thinner and thinner as you roll it out. I'm gonna drop the pasta into the machine and crank. Do it again. Excellent. Okay, so now that I've rolled it out on the first setting, I'm going to increase the number to one, and I'm going to now roll it out so it gets a little bit thinner. Okay, so I'm going to continue rolling out the dough, and what we're looking for really is just to be able to see the shape of your fingers underneath the dough. Just as a side note, this is a really great activity to do if you have kids running around the house, because they love dough, and also they're really good with their thumbs, so making ravioli should come very quickly to them. I think we're about there. Okay, so just to reiterate what I was talking about as far as seeing your hand through the dough, let me just lift this up for you. There you go, you can see my hand. Hello. All right, so it's time to start filling our ravioli. So I have a teaspoon measure here, um, and what I'm just gonna do is take our artichoke filling and line it up across my rolled out pasta sheet. Now the important thing to remember is that when we do make the ravioli, we're gonna be taking the top of the dough and folding it onto itself. So you don't necessarily wanna put the filling in the center, I would say about the bottom third of the sheet of dough that you have lying here. I'll spread them out about an inch apart from each other so that we have plenty of space to get any air bubbles out, which is also important, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Again, focusing primarily on that bottom third of the sheet. Now, what I'll do right now is I will actually trim off the ends so it's more of an exact rectangle. As you can see, I have some curved ends of the sheet dough itself. So I'll just take my bench scraper, Cut these off. Now we want to make sure that the top of the dough is going to stick onto the ravioli, of course. So here I do have a little bit of egg white. After all, we were separating a ton of eggs earlier today, so it's really cool to just be able to reserve a little bit of the egg white for this purpose. And I'm just going to take a pastry brush and brush the top half of dough. 
All right, so now I'm going to take the two ends of the top of the dough and fold it right over our filling. And now the first thing I wanna focus on is getting out those air bubbles that I was talking about earlier. So I'm just gonna very gently take my fingers and press on the top so that it seals. And now I'm gonna take my left hand and sort of keep this gap open for that air to come out. And I'm just gonna work my fingers around the filling in order to get all those air pockets out. If you do have an air pocket, uh, the problem with that is as soon as it goes in that boiling water, it's gonna explode into a hot mess. And you really wanna be eating these raviolis and not cleaning up a hot mess. So very important to make sure that you get all those air bubbles out. Just working your way around the filling to get those air bubbles out and we should be ready to go. But now we do have to trim the ravioli. I do have this little fancy pants fluted cutter, but you can certainly just use a pizza wheel or a knife. It doesn't really matter. Um, so what I'm gonna do is first go directly across the top. And what I always like to tell people is do this with confidence. You don't wanna go stop, go stop, or else you're gonna get very jagged cuts on the dough. So as soon as you go, just commit to it and just keep rolling with your pasta cutter and you will be good to go. So now we will do the bottom edge with the same confident thrust of the <laughs> fluted wheel. Boom. And now we will get the edges of the ravioli. We'll kind of cut right in between where we put the filling so that you can have little squares of perfect ravioli. Great, so we have our first batch of ravioli finished. Now what I wanna do is transfer them to a sheet pan, which I am gonna dust lightly with flour just so that it doesn't stick. Now what's also great about this is after we've transferred these to a sheet pan, as long as you have them in a single layer, at this point you can even freeze them, throw them into a Ziploc baggie. So then at that point, all you have to do is have your sauce going, a pot of water at the boil, and you can assemble your ravioli dinner very quickly. One thing I did wanna emphasize here is that I did not roll out all of my dough at once because I didn't want it to dry out. Now, if you had more hands on deck in the kitchen, you could certainly roll out all of your dough, cover it with a damp towel, and bang out your ravioli. But in this case, because it's just me, I'm gonna roll them out individually. All right, so before we drop a ravioli, we of course wanna season our pasta water. So I have a tablespoon of salt. And now these are very delicate. You don't wanna just drop them and flop them into the water or else they're gonna break apart. So it's really important to just be very gentle, drop them into the water one by one. And these do take a little bit of time to cook. They should be ready in about 12 to 13 minutes. And something that you can do to test them to make sure that they're done is just pull one of the raviolis out of the hot water, cut off a little edge of the pasta, taste it, see if it's al dente. And if it's not, then you can just drop the whole ravioli back into the water and give it a couple more minutes. All right, so the rest of my ravioli are gonna go into the freezer. And in the meantime, we can get started on our brown butter sauce. Brown butter sauce is so classic this time of year. It's so nutty, it's so rich, and it's so tasty. I can't wait to add this to our artichoke lemon ravioli. All right, so I have eight tablespoons of unsalted butter here, and I'm gonna put this into my stainless steel skillet, turn the heat onto medium. And what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna walk away. I'm gonna continuously swirl the pan as the butter melts until we start to see the milk solids get brown. You're gonna get a nutty aroma. And remember that once it starts to brown, it's gonna happen really quickly. So again, you do not wanna walk away. And the important thing here is to just kind of treat it like a gentle giant. You don't want to slosh your pan around and lose all your butter, but you do wanna give the skillet enough momentum uh, in order for it to create kind of like a whirlpool effect in your pan. And the benefit of swirling it constantly is that you're going to have those milk solids brown at a much more even pace and none of them will stick and burn. So while I keep a close eye on my butter, I'm going to now chop my parsley. Okay, so we only need two tablespoons here, but the important thing is that it's nice, finely minced. All right, so as you can see, we have our nice, very golden brown milk solids for our brown butter. This is exactly what we're looking for. Now at this stage, we're gonna take the sauce off the heat and we're going to add our parsley that we chopped, some pine nuts, just about a half a cup of toasted pine nuts and a half a teaspoon of salt. Oh my goodness, that smells so good. All right, so it's been about 12 minutes for the ravioli, so let's just taste it and make sure that it is exactly where we want it to be. And I'll just cut off a little strip off the edge. Perfect, we're ready to plate and I'm ready to eat, so that's the important thing. All right, so again, I'm just gonna take my spider skimmer and very carefully try to get rid of any of the excess water on the outside of the ravioli before transferring it to your plate. 
All right, who am I kidding? Let's do one more, right on top. Now we have our brown butter sauce. Got those pine nuts, the fresh parsley, the brown butter, a little goes a long way. Now, because I have a little bit of extra parsley, I may as well sprinkle a little bit more on top just to re-emphasize that green, that pop of green that we love, especially, you know, this time of year. All right, so we're just gonna give this ravioli a little squeeze of lemon right on top, sort of wake everything up. And now, my favorite time of day. Oh my goodness. Wow. This is definitely one of my favorite ravioli recipes because it's a little out of the ordinary, it's still nutty, it's still comforting, and it's a surprising twist on classic winter flavors. I hope you make this for you and yours at home. Cheers. Mm -hmm.